Welcome back. How to score out of out in electronics in second PU board exams. Today I am going to give an advice about this topic. First of all we should have a burning desire inside so that this will be the starting point for all accomplishments. Just like a small fire cannot give much heat, a weak desire cannot produce great results. Goals Goals are very important. Without goals, a human being cannot achieve anything. For example, would you sit in a train or a plane without knowing where it is going? Your answer? Is absolutely no. Enthusiasm is good but without a direction enthusiasm is like a wildfire and leads to frustrations. So goals gives a sense of direction to this enthusiasm so that we can achieve something great. Now let me come to the point that is steps to score best. First of all, we should have interest in the subject that we are studying. That I would like to call it as determination. Next, we should be aware about our strong and weak areas in that particular subject. Self-awareness. Thirdly, Preparation. We need to put a timetable and we need to hard work. But along with timetable and hard work, smart study is a must for a competitive world. Then practice. As you know, practice makes man perfect. Work out the previous year's question papers for practice. Then self-evaluation. You need to know how much you are lagging or how much you are good at the topic, all those things. So whatever you worked out those papers, you sit and evaluate by yourself. So you will come to know which points you missed out, which points has more weightage, what else should be added or not. Then revise. This increases your confidence. Also, it helps in managing the time. List some confusing questions that you may think you go wrong and practice those questions. In exams, choose the sections according to your convenience so that at least half an hour will remain for revision. For example, you have to finish if it is a 3 hours 15 minutes paper, 15 minutes is for reading time, then 2 and a half hours is for writing time and keep another half an hour for revision. You need to revise those answers as if somebody else has written. Otherwise, you will not be able to find out the mistakes that is being done by you. If you think there is a mistake in the question, in the paper at least write the formulas or something about that question so that if the question is really wrong, then you can claim for grace mark. Otherwise. You cannot assume grace marks will be given and you cannot leave the question completely unattempted. Above which main thing a student need to know is the previous day of the exam he or she should sleep at least 6 to 7 hours so that the mind will be fresh. Also. A student should not write an exam with empty stomach. If a student writes exam with empty stomach, the concentration of the student will divert. 
again keep a separate bag for the exam in which the following things need to be kept without fail also do not change your bag until the last exam the things to be kept in your bag are hall ticket bus or metro pass id card money for emergency stationeries in this stationeries keep 3 to 4 pens pencils erasers sharpeners protractor compass etc also revised or worked papers for the last minute revision calculator a passport size photographs whether you need it or not keep all these things in your bag and do not change your bag till the last exam now let us come to the main point that is blueprint of the electronic syllabus in second pu karnataka board there are 13 chapters starting from fed ending up to modern communication how the weightage is how it is been distributed let us see any question paper is divided into three parts first knowledge how much you gained knowledge from that topic it is about 30% understanding 40% application or skill based questions which is for 30% again each division is divided into one mark two mark three mark and five mark questions five mark either it will be an essay type or it will be a problem so let us see chapter wise field effect transistor this will be asked for three or four marks transistor biasing will be asked for four or three marks then transistor amplifiers 12 marks you can make out the difference here if if it is asked for 3 marks then biasing will be asked for 4 marks if if it is asked for 4 marks then the biasing is asked for 3 marks feedback amplifiers for 5 marks op amp 11 or 12 marks oscillators 8 marks wireless communication 3 or 4 marks modulation and demodulation 14 or 13 marks power electronics and its applications 9 or 8 marks digital electronics 14 or 15 marks microcontroller 9 or 8 marks c programming 8 marks then the last one modern communication 5 marks totally the question paper will be set for 1 or 5 marks but a student need to score 70 that means 30 plus 5 35 marks is an extra questions next i would like to say priority basis if you study it will be called as smart study because this complete chapters i would like to divide it in three schedules that is the chapters which gives more weightage like transistor amplifiers modulation demodulations digital electronics etc then the average topics or the subjects which gives minimum marks but we can expect something guaranteed marks because as the chapters are small the questions which appear we can at least read within a few hours so that those topics will be covered so let us see about priority of selecting chapters for the study first i would like to say digital electronics and second one modulation and demodulation both are asked 14 or 15 marks each 
transistor amplifier 12 marks op amp 11 oscillators 7 after these five chapters move on to feedback amplifiers 5 marks wireless communication 4 marks modern communication 5 marks field effect transistors 4 marks bipolar junction transistors 3 marks and in the third division keep these three chapters power electronics devices and its applications microcontrollers and C programming which will be asked for 8 marks each thereby we are covering maximum by the first two slots only and the second slot will be an optional for us next let us see the question paper pattern question paper consists of four parts part A part B part C and part D part A consists of 10 one mark questions but remember there is no choice in this question that means you need to answer all the 10 questions under this section and people would like to score out of out there's no choice for them they need to attempt completely part A successfully part B consists of 8 2 mark questions out of which we need to answer only 5 part C 8 3 mark questions out of which 5 has to be answered part D is again divided into two types one problem section this comes under skill or application wherein 3 Questions need to be answered out of five questions. Each problem carries five marks. Part D, second part, is an essay type question. Six questions will be asked totally, out of which we need to answer four. Important of one mark questions. As I stressed already, the people who need to score out of out are the best they need to attempt this section completely also remember part a and part b if the student is thorough he is almost having 30 percent of his marks because a person who is attempting an exam out of 70 marks if he scores 21 he'll be declared pass so we need to understand the importance of one mark questions it is very very important for a slow learner as well as for a topper because many a times they lose marks in part a or part b and they could score only 68 or 69 out of 70 importance of two mark questions two mark questions we need to answer five out of eight but the main thing in this is some questions like compare, distinguish, define, differentiate like these type of questions which lead the students into confusion and even though they know the answers they may go wrong in these type of questions. So students need to be very careful while choosing questions under two marks again I would like to highlight the common mistakes that a student does which will lose his marks first of all we are dealing with electronics means circuits are very very important under this circuits missing common ground point arrowhead in transistors and FET etc will not give a marks to the circuit. Graphs, we need to write x-axis, y-axis, parameters, labeling is very much necessary, etc. Then coming to op-amp, plus VCC and minus VEE 
along with the ground connections whether we have connected or not. The pin diagrams 7400, 7402 are NAND and NOR gate ICs then 7476 flip flop and 741 is an op amp. Write extra questions that means you need to choose in such a way that part A should be answered within 1 5 15 minutes part B should be answered within 15 minutes again C D E you can take half an hour each so that two hours you are finishing your paper then another half an hour you write extra questions also please do not mention them as extra questions because we take the maximum numbers into consideration and we put extra for the minimum marks that they secured so don't leave any questions Again, if you think there is a mistake in the question or in a question paper, then write that question number, part, section, all those things. Write something related to that topic and submit so that if in then some important two more questions. Distinguish between skip distance and skip zone. Skip distance is the minimum distance measured between transmitting antenna and the first receiving antenna along the surface of the earth. Skip zone. This is the region. Skip distance is the minimum distance. Skip zone is a region around the receiving antenna. Within the skip distance, there were ground waves not sky waves are present. This zone is also known as silent zone as no signals are received by this zone. Distinguish holding and latching current in an SCR. Latching current and holding current three fourths of the statement is right but the last statement differs. It is the minimum anode current required to maintain the thyristor on state. Up to this it is common. But for latching current this state remains as it is even though we remove the gate signal. Whereas for holding current the SCR should be in on state otherwise it will not be taken into account. Usually holding current is less than latching current. Explain the term thermal runaway in transistor. Thermal runaway is a self destruction of an unbiased transistor due to increase in temperature. Unbiased means without connecting any external supply. That means transistor is neither in forward bias nor in reverse bias. Then distinguish between single hop and multiple hop. Define pinch off voltage. Pinch off voltage is in FET. This there are two voltages cut off and pinch off. When VGS is zero, what is the drain current? When VGS is zero, what is the drain current? Depending on this, we can define pinch off in two ways. First, the drain source voltage at which the drain current becomes maximum and constant is known as pinch off voltage. At this time VGS is equal to 0 volt. The voltage VGS at which the channel is cut off and the drain current reduces to 0 when VDS is 0 is known as pinch off. So you can either define this way or this way but make it sure a proper notation should be used. There are few more confusing questions. Write any two applications of email. Write any two applications of internet like this. Email, internet, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. 
draw the frequency spectrum of AM or FM waves. Write the pin diagram of 7400 or 7402. Compare FET and BJT. Classify amplifier based on biasing conditions or coupling conditions etc. Compare efficiency and distortions of different power amplifiers. Compare CB and CC and CE amplifiers. Give any two applications of Yagi, Horn, Microstrip Antenna. Any two disadvantages of FM. Distinguish between damped and undamped oscillations. Distinguish between positive and negative feedback. Draw the circuit diagram of dual input balanced output, dual input unbalanced output, single input balanced output and single input unbalanced output. Similarly, the block diagrams of voltage series, current series, voltage shunt and current shunt feedback amplifiers. Advantages or disadvantages of RC or LC oscillators. Define critical frequency and critical angle. Distinguish between power amplifiers and voltage amplifiers. Compare different types of coupling amplifiers. Distinguish between open loop and closed loop like, uh, gains like etc. So these are all very very important questions. So model paper 1, expand the term FET. You need to answer at that particular point. Don't drag the answer. Here only expansion is asked. Just write field effect transistor. Second question, which region of a transistor acts as a closed switch? Saturation region is enough. I have written little extra to understand. Mention one application of a comparator, zero cross detector or Smith de trigger. I have written both. What is over modulation? When modulation index exceeds one, then it is called as over modulation. Mention the frequency range of the FM receiver 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. Name the power device used in controlled rectifier. The name only is giving, see, controlled rectifier. So it is a silicon controlled rectifier. Write the BCD code for 23 to the base 10. Use 8421 code individually, you transfer it as a zeros and ones. Which code is used in shaft position encoder? That is gray code. How many register banks are present in 8051? 4. If you look at the pin diagram, P0, P1, P2, P3, each consists of 8 registers. What is command to execute program in Unix system? This is A dot out. Name two types of JFET, N channel and P channel. Mention any two characteristics of a CC amplifier. You see, two characteristics are asked, but I have written all. In case if anything goes wrong, definitely I can expect two marks. Mention different types of negative feedback. Voltage series, voltage shunt, current series and current shunt like this. Draw the equivalent circuit of a transmission lines for low frequency. For low frequency, it consists of RLC. Then for high frequency, it is only LNC. If you remember that, you can easily write this diagram. Give the reason for the presence of drift layer. It should have a large blocking voltage as well as large forward current. High power rating. Large blocking voltage is in reverse bias. Large forward current and high power rating are in forward bias. Convert binary to gray. Binary to gray is a direct XOR operation. Keep first MSB as it is. Then do the XOR between these two. Put that here. Then again from zero. XR with 1, put that here, 1 XR with 1, put that here. So that 1011 a binary is equivalent to 1110 gray code. Mention any two types of errors that occur in C programming. There are three errors I have mentioned, syntax error, logical error and runtime error. You need to 
explain this because sometimes only mentioning you will not get marks explain what is meant by cell splitting splitting up of geographical area into small hexagonal shaped cells that fit together to form a honeycomb pattern is known as cell splitting i wish you all the best for your exams thank you for watching patiently i hope this video will definitely help you all please subscribe my channel comment in the comment box so that i can upload more videos for your reference